we're going to be turning the page, as it were, and uh, focusing on uh, a new to new topic, a new series of topics over the next several months, most of the next year, actually. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's one of these one of these areas that's super important in in Buddhism, but also an area that in, in didn't get a lot, still doesn't get a lot of attention, even though it's it's um, it's right up there. Uh, and quite important in, in, in Buddhism, Buddhist psychology, Buddhist training. Yeah. Uh, they're called, called the, the seven factors of awakening. The seven factors of awakening. Yeah. Another way to think of them is, is the seven factors of kind of optimal presence. When, when the practice really starts to line up, when the practice is really cooking, well, their qualities of heart and mind that are that are present uh, that and that need to be present uh, for for the practice to continue to unfold and deepen yeah now in the old days <laughs> i love saying the old days when they're just the 80s you know the 80s are the old days now yeah um in the 70s and the 80s uh and the 90s um really it was all about mindfulness and that's basically what with the instructions well, most of us got, you know, just be more, just be mindful, you know, just be mindful and that everything else will unfold from, from, from there, you know, just keep being mindful, right? Just keep coming back to the breath, just keep being mindful. Yeah. And then, but then on closer, taking a closer look at, at some of the, some of the, some of the texts, some of the instructions, some of, some of what Buddha left behind in terms of his teachings and trainings. Um, it turns out that mindfulness is only one of the seven factors of awakening. And this was absolutely stunning to me when I first found this out. You know, that it's actually one out of seven. There are seven factors that are involved and they're all important. They're all important. Yeah. They could, you could say that they're all central. Now, yes, mindfulness is one of the seven. You could say it's an important one because you know being present, being present, is uh, is certainly uh, essential in in the practice. We are practicing to become more present more of the time. To more to more of what's going on inside and outside, and in the first month, this month of September, that's the one that we'll be focusing on. You know, mindfulness. But there are six others. There are six others that come together. And now, some of you may know them. Some of you may know a couple of them. Some of them won't be a surprise to you, but here they are. Here they are. But go ahead in your head. Just think about what they. What could. What else could there possibly be other than just mindfulness? Six others, really? How could that be? How could that be? Yeah. Uh, well, one of them is balanced energy. One of them is balanced energy. Yeah. <clears throat> Why balanced energy? We say no. We'll go into detail in all of these. We're going to be spending a month on each one. But there's we can be mindful with unbalanced energy. <laughs> yeah. With too much push, with too much striving, with it's with it's too dry. It's too sun. It's too. Yeah. yeah. So balanced energy is one is one of them. Calm is one. Calm is one. Yeah. Now, of course, some of these we were working on when we cultivate the holding environment. We're also cultivating some of these qualities, right? Calm is one of the seven. Yeah. You know, restlessness, as you know, is one of the five hindrances. We do need to learn how to calm. We all need that. It's like um, water in the desert, calm. Yeah, deeper calm. Calm is another one. That's another one. Yeah.
Rapt attention or joy is another one. Imagine this, that's one of the qualities, one of the seven qualities. Rapt attention, attention that simply does not want to turn away. It's kind of a fascinated attention, compelling attention. Oh, of course I want to stay with this. Of course I want to stay with this. Not, oh, the mind's wandering, oh, can I come back? No, it's, of course I want to stay with this. Rapt attention is another one. Hmm? Concentration is another one. Concentration. Again, all of these, we touch on them. We've touched on them in various ways, but we're going to really highlight them. Concentration, the ability to stay. Just the faculty of staying and learning how to stay. It's one of the great links, missing links, in, in, weak links in, in all of our practice. Yeah. yeah. All of them need cultivation. All, all these qualities, yeah? but being able to stay, being able to stay present, yeah, this is part of it is the training, and mindfulness does some of that, but there's concentration practices all by themselves, there's specific training, it's like playing the scales, learning how to stay present, really how to stay, yeah, so there's learning how to stay in concentration. And then it's, of course, wanting to stay, naturally inclining towards staying, which is rapt attention. Yeah. Okay. Partly because it's calm, etc. So they all they're all interconnected. And we'll talk about the ways that they're all interconnected as well over the next many months. Yeah. Another one is investigation. Investigations, and many of these are, you know, are gonna help you to understand the difference in the meaning of these words and these applications as, as opposed to our Western cultural understanding of investigation. It's way different. It's a different kind of investigation. It's looking at the a structure of the mind. It's not investigating content of the mind at all. And we're so attached to our content and to our stories. It's not that kind of investigation. It's how to really, really start to look at the various structures, uh, the, way, the way the mind is structured itself. Yeah. And the ways we create ourselves, we create suffering for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And the ways we fail to see impermanence and orient around the, 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 the reality of impermanence. Yeah. So it's investigation of a different kind, but it's considered to be hugely important, hugely important. Yeah. We can practice mindfulness for a long time without understanding investigation in the Buddhist, in the Buddhist sense, in the way that the Buddha said, this, this is super important. We can be mindful and just get, be with our stories for years and our thought patterns and not know how to how to do a different kind of investigation. So it's a really important one, really important one uh, as the practice deepens, if the practice is going to deepen. Yeah. And the seventh one is equanimity. <clears throat> yeah, equanimity. Yeah. Being able to stay with a more even, in a more even-handed way, with a wider range of what's going on in the mind and in the body and in life <clears throat> without being knocked off the horse, <clears throat> without being overly reactive. You know? Very big deal. It's a very big deal. As the practice deepens, <clears throat> all of these factors uh, begin to come together and they can be practiced to some extent individually as well as collectively, you know, and you begin to begin to notice within your practice, are these qualities present or not? 
which ones are present and which ones are not. They, they will start to become obvious over time and more obvious over time as we begin to study them and as you begin to identify them and locate them because it's the words, right? And we'll understand them more cognitively, but it's really not just understanding them more cognitively. It's understanding how to invite them and recognize them in your meditation practice, obviously, and cultivate them, right? That's where the, that's where the action is. You know, that's where the liberation is. That's where the freedom is that the Buddha talked about. And being able to bring, see those qualities, invite them, see the importance of them, recognize when they're there, and recognize when they're not there. You know, knowing what to cultivate and what, and what to reinforce and knowing what to not cultivate any further and not reinforce any further is a lot of what this practice is about. A lot of what these practices are about. Yeah? Yeah. But these seven qualities, <clears throat> these seven qualities as they come together, will come together as, as they come together, will deepen your meditation practice. And the absence of in the absence of those qualities, practice will only only go so far. Mindfulness by itself will only, only go so far. Yeah. 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 So it's an integrative model, these seven qualities, these seven qualities of how they come together, how they come together in a kind of optimal presence or an optimal state of state of heart and mind. Yeah. 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 And so this is where we will be headed. And, uh, yeah, and so this week, there's the, just the overview um, the overview of these seven, and then we'll be uh, we'll take them one at a time, one month at a time. To um, as we do with every topic in the daily sit, it's a chance to go in with a little bit more nuance, with a little bit more um, in, uh, exactly like the expression "drilling down." You know, but going in, going in 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 a more in a, in a more detailed way, in a more nuanced way. Yeah. Into, into the subject at hand. And so we'll have a chance to do that with, uh, with, these, with these seven characteristics, seven characteristics of um, uh, uh, qualities of mind, seven awakening factors, they're called, the awakening factors, yeah? Very important. I'm personally very excited about these qualities and about bringing them to the daily sit and spending more time on them. They're so important, they're so important. And it'd be much easier to some extent. It's in the timing wise, you know, we try to introduce these things where we feel it's a good time for the Sangha too. And um, with having had more experience now with the holding environment, with the Four Noble Truths, with many of the topics that we've covered, the seven factors, uh, we believe will make even more sense to you at this time uh, for you to integrate the, these, these teachings at this time in your practice. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll stop here for now. Uh, and um, well, you know, we have to, all these qualities to look forward to, culti to cultivate together. And so um, thank you for your attention. And now let's, um, let's open up. Let's open up. And when you're ready, gradually slowing it down, coming in more for a landing, lightly closing the eyes.
and forming the attention to uh, drop down as it were beneath the thought stream and down into the body, into the, the breath, the body breathing. And with each breath, with each exhale, inviting more settling. And little by little, uh, more calm. Little by little, incrementally, a little more ease. a little more settledness.
when the mind wanders away. Here is the next breath. Returning here. And softening.
Uh, <clears throat> softening and allowing. Uh, in the last few minutes, settling back a bit more, receptive attention.
Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.